All right, time to settle down. Good morning. Okay, all right. Um, Okay, uh, so today's lecture is going to be on uh, what's called uh, deterministic finite automata and uh, one can say that this is perhaps the simplest model of a computing device, okay. So you know what is simple, right, uh, uh, it's not uh, formal but these are things that uh, we kind of do, uh, we see uh, in, in practice, uh, for example, uh, you would say that uh, the logic for an elevator which goes up and down is pretty simple, right? It doesn't do much. It's, um, uh, uh, and the, the, there are many ways of thinking about this simple model. And I guess a simple, uh, one, one way to think about it is a state machine which doesn't have any memory. So what I mean, it does have memory, but only in its states. So let's try to uh, understand that. Uh, and it's good to have uh, multiple ways of thinking about what this model is, so that when we go on to more richer models, we'll be able to connect things. So uh, let's, I mean, we all know programs. So when we say, you know, simple programs, like what kind of programs are simple, right? So let's take a very simple problem, right? What is a simple problem? I want to know whether a given string has odd length. It's a very simple problem, right? Okay, so how would we write code for it? We had to write a C program to check whether a given input uh, string has odd length. What would you do? We'll write some program like this, right? So you say, okay, I'm going to count the symbols that I read. And at the end, I will check whether the number count I saw is odd or even. Yeah? Very simple, right? Okay. Um, okay, let, so, so it makes sense, yeah? Okay. So what happens if you run this program on your computer? I mean, you know, you write it in C or something. Say, let's say you write it in C or C++ or Java, for example. Is it a, will, will something happen with this? If I give it a, a very long string, what will happen? Yeah, it may overflow, right? Okay. Why does it overflow? Why? What is going on there, right? Yeah, the integer will overflow, right? Okay, but why is that? It's because this program requires, in some sense, the uh, size of the memory which is growing with the size of the input, right? Okay. So uh, in in practice, when we say int in C, for example, it's just a fixed size. It's not unlimited integer, right? So can we rewrite this program? Okay, here is a, a small variation of the same program. Uh, I guess for some reason this clicker is not working. Uh, here is a, a, another program for the same problem, okay? So what's the difference between uh, this program and the previous one, right? I'm not storing the, the, I'm not keeping a count of the length of the string, right? I just keep one bit, okay? I just keep the parity of the length I've seen so far, right? Make sense or no? Yeah? Okay. So the, 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 this program, yeah? Yeah? I mean, what is a bit, you know, just one bit, right? Okay. This program doesn't need to store, even if the string is very long, its internal memory is, is only one bit, right? Modulo some logic and stuff, right? Okay? So this program has, has a fixed memory which is independent of the size of the input, 
It doesn't need, need uh, uh, more uh, memory than, than some absolute constant, right? So programs of this sort are very simple, right? And the things that you can do with such programs is also going to be simple, right? We will see later on that this is precisely the class of, uh, these, are, these kind of programs are really what recognize regular languages. Okay, but programs are still complicated to understand. C is complicated to understand. So you want to sort of say, okay, you know, let's try to understand it a little differently. Okay, we're going to make it even much more simple. And it is without loss of generality. It's not obvious to see it, but let's look at this model because we'll come back to this uh, when we do Turing machines. Okay, so here is another simple machine. What does it do? The input is written on a tape. Okay, there's a tape. Okay, an input is written on a tape. It's a read-only tape. What does that mean? The machine cannot write on it. It can only read from it. Okay, so it starts at the leftmost uh, symbol. Okay, and it moves to the right one symbol at a time. Okay, the only thing it can do is that when it reads an input symbol, it can change its internal state. Okay, so the machine has a bunch of finite number of states. Okay, just a state machine, we'll see another representation of it, okay? So when it sees a one, it says, oh, well, maybe I can, uh, it, it has a freedom to change its state, okay? But it cannot do anything else, okay? And then it keeps moving to the right, okay? It sees one symbol, potentially change its state, reads the next symbol, and what happens at the end? Well, you know, it has to say yes or no to this, to this uh, string, okay? How does it decide yes or no? Well, some of these states are special states, like they're circled, right? If at the end of the input, the machine is in a circle state, it will accept yes, otherwise it's no. Okay. okay. You see, it, it, because it cannot write on the tape, it cannot have any extra memory, right? The only way it remembers anything is by remembering it its own state, okay, which is fixed because the states are not changing. I mean, there's a finite set of states, okay? So I want us to think that this model is like a program whose memory cannot increase with the size of the input. Okay? Okay, so, you know, this is one way of thinking about a finite state automata. Let's think of yet another way. It's the same thing, uh, but we'll work with this, this uh, formalism because it's simpler, even simpler. And in this formalism, we represent the, the machine really as just a, a, a graph a labeled graph, okay? So, so this is the model we'll work with, but they're all the same, okay? It's not completely obvious, but they're all the same, okay? So what is this uh, machine or uh, automaton as it's, uh, it's uh, historically called because it's a machine, right? Uh, so it's a graph, okay? So it is one node for each state, okay? All right, good. And uh, there are arcs you can see, right? Okay, so what, is the, what do the arcs mean? For every state, we want to know if you see a symbol zero, what should, which state should you go to, right? If you see symbol one, which state you should go to, right? So for every state and every symbol in the alphabet, which for simplicity here is zero, one, you need to know if I read this symbol in this state, which state should I move to, right? So the meaning of this label is that if I am state Q0 and I see a 0, I'll move to Q3. Okay. So how many edges will be going out of each node? In general, the size of the alphabet, right? Because I need to know for every symbol, where should I go when I read this symbol? Okay. And we need to know where to start, right? We need to know where to start. So that's what this arrow is saying. Okay. This is saying that the machine starts in this state. Okay. All right. And then some of these states, this state has a double circle as opposed to a single circle. What does that mean? That means that that is the accepting or the final state. That if I end up in that state, that means the machine is going to accept that string. And otherwise it's not going to accept that string. Okay. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. The, 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 uh, the model has states, which a uh, finite number of states and the transitions or for every state we have to look at, a, for every symbol and every state and every symbol, we need to know if I'm in this state and I see this symbol, where should I go to next, okay? 
that's it this is a, a very simple model of computation right okay and i claim you know without proof is that essentially any c program you write whose memory cannot increase with the size of the input is is this okay right it's not completely obvious we'll see why it's not obvious uh, okay so that that is that is this model okay now let's try to make more sense of this uh, slowly we'll get to the formalism right uh, okay let's see so now given a string 001 and we started q0 where does it go okay okay you see uh, by convention we are going to read the string from left to right there is no there is no i mean you could have equally define the whole thing like uh, hebrew or something right to right, right you know this is just convention right so the machine should read left to right or right to left from a string right you just left to right okay so that's the convention so we after we see zero from this where do we go we go to q3 right yeah and then the next zero we go to q2 and then we stay in q2 right okay technically this should be two arcs but for simplicity we just draw one arc and put zero and one there what are, that means is that these two arcs we are making only one arc to make our life a little easy yeah okay it's a labeled graph so this is a little okay where does this lead to okay one we go q1 then we go back then we go here then we go back and right yeah okay so the behavior of the machine is clear yeah okay so uh so which strings do you think end up in the accepting state here can you understand this machine what is this machine doing what strings will it accept what i mean remember what does it accept mean that the, uh, this machine will accept a string if it ends up in only this state right okay if i start here which strings will lead me back to this in, at the end i mean it's not completely obvious but uh, just to get a feel for it alternating zeros and ones yeah yes uh, so i mean how, how would we write a regular expression for it what is the regular expression for alternating zeros and ones we have a more precise language now right One zero or zero one star. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that good? No. I mean, I'm asking. I mean, do, do we know what strings this machine is accepting? So th this is what kind of state is this? Yeah. So. yeah okay so i mean you want to convince yourself that it is alternating zeros and ones right if you two, see two zeros or two ones it land up in what it land up in this state and it cannot leave this state okay okay all right so that's yeah or maybe it's not true but right? okay right One zero zero. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so one zero zero. Ah, okay, so this is right. Okay, one zero zero is going here, right? Yeah, it's not ending in terminal state, so it can come back, right? Okay, yeah, so that's not right. Yeah. Okay, what is it then? Sorry. One zero and zero one star again. Yeah. So that's uh, so. But what is it? one zero zero one is accepted now? So so. Okay, is it doing some counting? Okay. So so his claim is that it is one zero. One zero plus zero one star. 
Okay, but uh, it accepts the string uh, uh, 1001, right? Is that in the language? In your language? Okay, okay. All right. So it's not so easy, no? Yeah? So we got on. Okay, we'll come back to this, okay? Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Can you prove it? Right? So we'll see, we'll see techniques to prove it, right? Okay, so one thing we need to uh, understand is that every string if you, from any state has a unique state it'll go to, right? We can trace its path, right? That's why it's called deterministic finite automata. We'll later see non deterministic finite automata, right? Which is different, right? Because it, the word says, right? Deterministic means that. If you give me a string and a state, it will we we'll know exactly where it will go, right? So that's what we expect of a, of a machine, right? So what are examples of machines which don't behave that way that are still interesting? Have you used randomization? Yeah? Have you, have you used hashing? Right? So machines which, which use randomization don't quite behave exactly on every string the same way, right? It depends also on the randomness that you throw, okay? And then we'll see non-deterministic machines which do even more funky things, okay? Okay, so when does a machine accept a string? We already saw that if you start with the start state and the string is led to the some accepting state. There could be multiple accepting states, not just one, right? It, in this machine, it just so happens to be one, okay? Okay. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what uh, accepting uh, uh, is defined as for a string. And what is the language accepted by this, this machine? Exactly all the strings which are accepted, okay? So very important uh, I mean, uh, to remember the following, right? So when you say M accepts L, what does it mean? That every string in the language is taken from the start state to an accepting state, and only those, right? It means that anything which is not in the language must be rejected. Yeah. Okay. So when when we, when we say you know the language accepted by machine, we have to be careful that you know it accepts only the strings in the language and doesn't accept anything else, which means that every other string must be rejected by the machine. Right. It's an obvious point, but you know it gets uh, confusing. Right. Okay. So people also will later on use this word called recognizes L. Right. Which which is better than accept. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, with historical reasons, we just uh, use accept, okay? Okay, now we will we'll try to make this more mathematical and formal so that we can, instead of just drawing a figure, we can actually uh, write mathematical notation to describe a machine, yeah? Oh, okay. Um, uh, sorry? Yeah, it just, you know, it, the, it, the, it's the same thing. We are stressing the fact that, you know, if a string is not in the language, the machine must reject it. Okay. So when we think of, you know, what does this machine do, it's easy to understand what it accepts. Okay. It's not, I mean, sometimes we make a mistake by just focusing on what it accepts, but not figuring out what it rejects. No, no, say, it's okay. When we say that a machine accepts a language L, it does what it should do, right? That is, you know, if you give a string in the language, it should say yes. If you give a string which is not in the language, it should say no. Okay? It's just stressing that. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, not a, a difficult point just to make sure that we don't make, uh, when, when we design machines or when we think of, about what a machine does, we have to think of both directions to be sure. Okay, so we'll set up some mathematical notation to define what a machine is. It has uh, five pieces, okay? It's a five tuple, right? What is a DFA? Well, the first one is the set of states, a finite set of states, okay? And the second one is the alphabet that we are working with, okay? And the third one, which is the main thing, is a transition function. 
what should a transition function tell us? It tells us essentially the edges of this graph, right? So what should the machine, you know, it's telling us what the machine does. How do we, how does it tell us? For every state Q and a symbol A, it should tell us what's the next state, right? So how do we think about it mathematically? We think about it mathematically as it's a function from Q times sigma to Q, okay? So what it means is that for delta Q A is the state that the machine goes to if it is in state Q and the symbol is A, right? Because we want a unique state, this is a function, right? Yeah? Does this make sense? What, what is it saying? It is, it's saying that this is a function which takes tuples. One part of the tuple is a state, the other part of the tuple is a letter from the alphabet and it gives what? A state. Yes, it belongs to, so if it is P, it means that on state Q when reading a letter A, we get to P, okay, it's a function, okay, all right, all right, and the next piece is, uh, what is the start state, right, among all these states, which one is the start state, okay, we have to say the S is a member of Q and it's the start state. Yeah, and is uh, what are all the accepting states? Okay, it's a subset of Q. Yeah, it's a set, not a single element. While the start state is just a single element of Q. Like, is it clear the distinction between the start state and the accepting states? Okay, that that's the definition. Okay, that's how you formally state. In many books and other things you will have an alternative notation uh, just if you're reading other sources typically they use q0 for the start state and f for final state okay it just uh, in case you see other sources okay 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 so exam example what is q here okay it is okay what is sigma I mean, it's implicit in this, yeah, 0, 1, okay. What is uh, delta? Okay, how should we specify delta? Sorry? Yeah, so it's a, it's a big table, right? Yeah, for every Q and every A, we have to tell it what the next state. So typically, we draw it this way. How do we draw it? Like a table. Okay, we put sigma here and we put q here and we draw a table like this. In this case, there is a sigma is only 0 and 1 and we draw a table with q0, q1, q2, q3. Okay, now we fill up this table, right? What is uh, delta q0 and 0? Sorry, q3. And on 1, Q1, and for Q1, Q0, and Q2, and for Q2, okay, and Q3, Q3, Q2, Q0, okay? Okay, that's how you specify. If you want to formally write it, you, you have to specify either the table or a, we'll see later a mathematical notation which for uh, is in some more compact fashion. Okay, all right, we'll see some other ways. Okay, that's how you specify delta. And then uh, S is what? Q0. What is A? Ah, is it Q0? The set containing in Q0, okay? Be careful, it is not Q0, it is the set containing Q0, right? Is the distinction clear? 
and it's important. Okay, it's a subset of states by definition. So it is syntax is important. Okay, yeah. Yes, you can have more than one accepting set. So we'll we'll see that. Okay, yeah. No, I, this for this machine it is Q zero. Okay, because of the pictorial representation. Okay, not uh, yeah. I mean, depends on uh, what we want, right? Okay, so what does this transition function tell us, right? It says you know if I'm in state Q and I have a symbol A, where do I go, right? But we want to understand normally, you know, if I'm state Q and I give you a string W, where does it take us, right? That's also something that we want notation for, yeah? So it's intuitively clear, right? What is it uh, that, you know, if I am state Q and I give you a string W, where does it go? Well, we follow the machine, right? Yeah? So can, we need notation for that because we can talk about interesting things once we have the notation for that. So we want to know for every Q and every string W, what is the machine going to do from Q if you give you W, right? So we'll call this extended uh, extension of delta and we define it inductively, right? We, we visualize it, right? You know, it's intuitive that I'll follow the machine, follow the graph, right? But, you know, that's not going to work when you want to prove, right? So we have to give a formal inductive definition. And what is this delta star? It's a new function, right? What does this function do? What, is it, what are its inputs? A state and now what? Not a letter, but a string, right? From what? Any string, right? So the input for this function is Q times not sigma, but sigma star. Okay, what is the output? Where does this machine take us on this state Q and string W, right? So the output is going to be a state. Right? It's a function, it's a deterministic machine. So you can't go to two different states from the same string from a fixed state. So it, it's a function. So okay, how is it defined? What is delta star Q on W if W is epsilon? We always go back to the inductive definition of a string and then figure out, out what to do, right? If W is epsilon, what should the, what does the machine do? If I'm state Q and I don't see any symbol, where do I go? I stay where I am, right? Yeah, that's the definition. I, if I, I see epsilon, I don't go anywhere, right? Okay, if otherwise, we know what W is, right? Inductively, we say, okay, it is AX for some string X and the letter A, okay? So what do we do? We go first from Q to, the what is delta QA give us? It tells us the state to which we go if you see the symbol A, right? The first symbol of the string, okay? And then from there, we have to see the string X. We already know because x is of length less than w, so inductively that tells us where we'll go eventually, right? So this is a definition of delta star. Yes? Yeah? Okay? This is just, no, it's intuitive, but we need it for proofs. Okay, what is the language now? Accepted by the machine, you can say it formally, right? What is the machine accept? It's a set of all strings such that they, when you start in the start state s, it'll get you to some accepting state. Yeah? This is a nice compact mathematical way of saying what is the language accepted by this machine. Well, if you start in start state S, this delta star should take you from S to some accepting state. Okay? Remember, this is a set, that's why I put belongs to here. Right? Yeah? Okay, let's see an example, right? So what is delta star Q1 epsilon? Yeah. Yeah. You have a question? You need to write it down. It's on the website, no? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what is delta star Q1 epsilon? Yeah? What is it? Yeah, Q1. What about this? Delta star Q0 one zero one one. Okay, we just do the, what we did earlier, right? You know, we say, ah, okay, Q zero one zero one one, right? One zero one one, right? Q two, right? Okay, and makes sense, right? I don't have to repeat this, yeah. 
You can figure it out, right? That is just the definition. Okay. Uh, so that just to understand that delta star helps us to say something. Okay. So many times what we are going to do is, you know, uh, we have the same machine, right? We have a, a machine initially, but we want to understand what happens if we change the start state to something else, right? Okay. The rest of the machine doesn't change, right? Its behavior is, the only thing we are changing is we are changing the start state. It becomes important that you know you have a machine and you start playing with it. So we can ask questions like, oh, okay, if the if the start state is changed, does how does this behave? Uh, you know, we can change the acceptance states to Q2, Q3. What happens? We'll see that these kind of manipulations are useful. And when we when we change only the start state or acceptance states and don't change the transition function, the extended transition function delta star also doesn't change, right? Because the, the delta star depends only on delta. So so we'll we'll. Uh, uh, we'll 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 uh, uh, see the advantage of a formal specification. Okay, okay. Let's do some uh, constructions, right? Uh, so how do we design? You know, I, I give you a, a, a language like we did with regular expressions, and I want to de design a DFA for it. Yeah, yeah. So you have to say hi or something, right? Like Otherwise, yeah. I can't see. Also. Sorry. On, on not all strings, right? For some strings, it will take you to an accepting state, and some strings, it will take you something which is not accepting, right? Right? Because there is only some of them. If you, if you start the machine on a state, what does it do on a string? You just follow the rules, right? And you end up in some state, deterministically. And if that state happens to be an accepting state, yes, the machine will say yes. If it happens to be non accepting state, it says no. Yeah? Okay, so now we're going to try to design uh, this very simple uh, programs or machines for specific languages. And how do we design this, right? You know, how, how do we design uh, these simple machines for, for uh, a, maybe a complicating looking language, right? Remember the intuition, a deterministic finite state automaton does not have, it has a finite set of Finite memory, right? You cannot remember anything about this big string that you're seeing, right? You have to, what can the, the machine do? It can store some information. After seeing a long string, it can only store some fixed amount of information, right? It has to forget all the other stuff. It can't keep the, keep the entire string in its memory because that is growing and growing, right? So Remember the example of, you know, if you want to check whether the string's length is divisible by two or it has odd length, what do we need to remember? After seeing a long string, what do we need to remember to continue the process? It was odd or even, right? That's one bit. Okay. So we have to think like that. Okay. If I have to recognize these strings in this language and I'm not allowed to use a lot of memory, but a fixed memory, what can I remember so that I can process the remaining part of the string and still get the right answer? Right? So uh, this is a very restricted set of programming languages, right? So, and what this machine is not actually, I mean, the way we set it up, the only thing it can remember is via its states, right? We don't say, you know, it has a fixed box of memory which can store, right? That's because, you know, for convenience, we are not doing that. But everything it, 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 it needs to remember has to be in the form of its state. Okay, so that's how you need to think. The state is a memory. What do you, and then you have to think, what do we need to remember? So let's do some simple, uh, okay. What is a machine to recognize an empty set? But I don't want to accept any string. One state machine. I don't want to accept any string, so I have to reject everything. Sorry? Yeah, okay, you know, you have uh, no accepting state, so it can't accept anything, right? I mean, you know, it, 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 it won't accept anything because there is no accepting state. The accepting set, set of accepting states is empty set. Yeah? Okay. I see some puzzled looks. Uh, maybe it's completely obvious. <laughs> what if I want to accept everything? 
Ya. No, no, this is an empty set. That means the, the accept. So what does it mean to design a DFA for a language? That means if you give a string in the language, you should say yes. And if you give a string not in the language, you should say no, right? You have a single machine which, which is recognizing this language, right? If you, if you give it strings, you know, on the, the right strings, it'll say yes, on the wrong strings, it'll say no. It's like a program which recognizes this language, right? Okay, remember the program. Well, if I give you a strings of, it, it takes all, the input is all set of strings, right? On the right strings, it should say yes, on the wrong strings, it should say no. Yeah? Because there is no final state, no accepting state. Oh yeah, there, I mean, in this model, there is no, it actually doesn't output anything because it's, it just ends up, by definition, it, wherever it ends up at, after seeing the last string, if it is in the accepting state, we think of it as saying yes. So, I mean, what does this machine do on any string? Yeah, it stays where it is, right? And uh, is that an accepting state? No, because I didn't draw two circles around it, right? In the graphical representation, two circles means it's an accepting state. Okay, well, let's, let's see the example. Right? Let, let, let me do one more thing. Maybe the notation is not clear. What does this do? What is the difference between these two machines? This is the same machine except that this is now an accepting state. The notation, which maybe I glossed over or, or I thought I said it, uh, but maybe it didn't sink in, is that if I give you a machine, like we did earlier, right, you know, See, every, mesh, every state has either one, I mean, if, if I have two circles, that means it's an accepting state. If it is one circle, I mean, it's just not an accepting state. That's just a graphical representation. Yeah? Well, I know, I think I said it several times, if it wasn't clear, you know. Uh, okay, that, that's, the, that, that's the graphical notation. Okay? Yeah? Okay. So what does this, what does this uh, machine accept? Everything, right? Yeah? Is that clear or no? Yeah? Okay. What about, uh, what about, uh, I just want to accept epsilon. I, I want everybody to take one minute to think about uh, how to do epsilon. I just want to accept that string, the empty string, nothing else. No, I, I know it's not hard for some of you. I'm just giving time for everybody to think a little bit on their own. On their own right? You need two states. If you don't have two states, it's hard. Okay. Okay, still thinking? Yeah, okay, okay, I, I'm sure many of you got it, so I, I won't pick favorites here, okay? Okay, yeah, the start state has to be accepting, right? Because if I'm right there, I have to accept, okay? As soon as I see a symbol, I should not accept it, right? So I get out into a state which is a non-accepting state and just stay there. Any questions about that? Yeah? Okay. All right, what about uh, just accepting zero? No, 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 no. 
it's not zero star, it's just zero. No, 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 but yeah, don't tell me, right, you know, do it, <laughs> right, draw it if you, just I'm giving people time to, just the string zero, okay. Yeah, talk to your you know neighbors if you you it, it helps, right? Verify. Okay? Yeah? That works? Yeah? You got one with only two? Okay, what is it? Oh, so he's suggesting that this would work. Uh, this one? Oh, but then it accepts epsilon. Okay, if your initial start state is an accepting state, it'll accept epsilon, right? If epsilon is not in your language, the start state cannot be an accepting state. Okay, so this won't work. Okay, all right, you're a little careful. Yeah. Yes. But, but, uh, Oh, but, but that depends on your language, you know. What do you want to accept in your language? No, so what I'm saying is for those who um, the same state, that you go to web the start state is the one. Right. Why don't we have a like a distinction between um so this is either the one or the zero zero or zero one? Why is it not like a I, you can create new states, okay? So the, the, the smallest machine that accepts a particular language is not, uh, there is a notion of that, but we don't have to design a very compact machine, okay? The goal is not to design the most compact machine. This came naturally to me. That doesn't mean that this is the only thing. You can create one with four states, which is maybe more natural to you, okay? So I could, I don't, I, I, you could have created a separate state which behaves like this, and that is perfectly fine too. So don't try to minimize the number of states in your machine. That's not the goal initially, at least, to understand, okay? You'll make more mistakes that way. And we'll see why it is better not to try to minimize and try to actually think what the states mean, okay? So let's do some more examples and it'll become clear, okay? Okay, I want to know, this, what is this language? This is a set of all strings whose length is divisible by five. Okay, so if you write a program, what would you want to remember after you see a bunch of big string? What is it that is enough to remember? It's the same as like, oh, uh, similar to what we saw earlier, right? I want to accept all strings of odd length, but I'm changing odd to be a little bit more messy now, right? I want to remember, I want to only accept strings whose length is divisible by five, right? So what do I need to remember if I have seen some long string? What do I need to remember? I only need to remember the mod 5, right? Okay. So I need five states, right? I mean, in some sense, I need to remember. Is the, after I've seen some string, is the, is the remainder after dividing by 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, right? Each of this I have to distinguish. If I can't distinguish them, then I'll get confused, right? Yeah? So I need at least five states to remember. What should I remember from what I've seen? Just the length, so the, the mod five of the length I've seen so far. Okay. So then, so let's draw, draw five states, right? And we'll label them. I'm going to draw them sequentially. So I'm going to put zero in here, one in here, two in here, three in here, four in here, right? 
what is the meaning of that numbering is that oh that is if i should be in that state if the string i've seen so far has that mod 5 right that's the meaning of that state right that's what i'm keeping track of where should i start zero okay because that's i epsilon i didn't see anything right and what should i do if i have uh, from zero if i see a symbol where should i go i go to one right and both zero and one i go to one and this okay and then what do i do which should be the accepting state okay yeah okay okay all right what about this one so i want all strings that end with 0 1 you have a question sorry oh because you know what are we trying to keep track of the number of the, the length of the string seen so far mod 5 right yeah okay uh, okay ends in 0 1 don't try to be clever okay yeah try not to optimize what should we remember if, if you don't want to be optimum too careful what what do we want to remember If I remember the last two symbols I've seen, and I, that, that's good enough, right? Okay, okay. Maybe you can optimize it, but just so that's the state we want to keep track of, right? So how many states should we have if you just don't think very carefully? You can get four states, right? You know, well, okay, because in the beginning we may have only one symbol, right? Yeah. Okay. So we need some extra states, right? Have you seen two symbols or have you seen only one symbol or we have not seen any symbol yet, right? Okay. So that way, you know, your, your main states are four states, right? What are the four states? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If we have seen at least two symbols and these are the last two that I've seen, okay? And what else do I need to have? I need to have one state which says, oh, I only have seen one symbol and that is zero. I've seen only one symbol and that's one. Okay. And I've not seen anything yet. This is a start state. Okay. This is just a start state. If I see a zero, I go here. If I see a one, I go here. I'm not trying to be optimal here, right? I'm trying to be very simple so that I'm making no mistakes, right? If I see from zero a one, what should I do? I go here, right? And if I see a zero, I go here. Okay, I'm just remembering what the last two symbols I've seen, right? Okay. Uh, if I see from one, this state is zero, what should I go? From here, if I see a zero, where should I go? One, zero, right? And if I see a one, I go here, right? Yeah? Is a design, I mean, once you know this, it's mechanical, right? Okay, that's what the DFA design means. That you're trying to create a, a machine which can only remember a fixed amount of information and that should be enough to figure out whether the string is in the language or not, right? So what is the accept state here? Zero, one, okay? And I'm sure you can optimize it, yeah? But the transition is saying, you know, you, I've, so the, the meaning of the state is, I have a seen, I, the string I've seen so far ends in one, and I've seen only one, one letter so far, okay? Remember, you know, I should not accept the string one, right? Okay, so these are the main states, right? This is saying, you know, I've seen at least two symbols, and these are the last two symbols I've seen so far. No, 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 that, no, this is not W size is only two. This is the last two symbols of the string I've seen so far. Yeah, everything else I can forget, no? 
Because I don't care. Okay, uh, maybe this is not clear. So if I see a string 1010001, what should I remember? I don't know when the string is going to end, right? Right? So I have to remember some information of the string seen so far, but not more than a fixed amount, so that even after I see the rest of the string, I should be able to figure out the right answer. That's the whole point of this very restricted class of machines. Okay? So this is what I'm remembering. This meaning of the state is, if I get to this point, it, say, it means that of the string I've seen so far, the last two symbols are 0, 1. Yeah? Questions on the, the design principle? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of charts I'm not uh, drawing because it'll take a while. Okay? But it's mechanical, no? If I've seen 0, uh, 1, 1 is uh, the last two symbols I've seen, and I see one more, what should I do? I should stay in the same place, right? On 1, okay? But if I see a 0, I should go to? Yeah, there are a lot of arcs I'm not drawing, okay? But I hope the idea is clear, okay? Okay, because there are a lot of things to go through, okay? Okay, I, I want to know all strings which have 0, 0, 1 as a substring. You want to take a couple of minutes and try this? Be a little careful, right? 0, 0, 1 is a substring. What it means is that one, as soon as you see a 0, 0, 1, the rest doesn't matter, right? You should say, aha, done, right? Till you have to, if you haven't seen a 0, 0, 1, uh, you, you shouldn't accept at that point, right? So what do you need to remember about what you have seen, and, right? The same as saying, you know, the string has CS3, 374, and it's the substring or something, right? Okay, getting somewhere? No, not yet. Okay, think of it like this. Can you, can you figure out uh, whether the string, whether the machine ends in 001? What's the difference between string ending in 001 and this language? Yeah?
So, I mean, think of like, if the first time I see, I, I, you know, look at the first time 0, 0, 001, you see it, right? That means that the first time you see 0, 0, 001, the string ends in 0, 0, 001, right? The only difference is that you can now, once you see 0, 0, 001, you remember, aha, I'm done, and then whatever else you see, you're happy with, right? That's the only difference, right? Between seeing, ending in 0, 0, 001 and, and this, right? So let's, I mean, I mean, we can even think like, ah, let, let's do it a little differently. I mean, you can do that mechanically that way. Uh, there are many solutions, but you can say, ah, I've seen a zero. Now I've seen zero, zero. Now I've seen zero, zero, one, right? I'm happy, right? So you can say, ah, okay, if I am in zero and I see a zero, I'll go to zero, zero. If I see a one, I go to zero, zero, one, which means that I've already seen zero, zero, one. Let's make it thing. And now anything else from here, I don't care, right? I can stay here, right? Okay, but if I am in zero, zero, and I see not a one, where should I go? I just stay here, right? If I see a zero, what does it mean that I, the string so far has ended in zero, zero, right? Okay, if I see from here a one, what should I do? Ah, so we need a start state anyway, because if we, this is what we need, this is the first zero we see, if I'm in zero and I see one now, what should I do? I can go back to the start state. And if I am in one, I just stay in one. Okay. So I'm just seeing ones and ones and ones. I haven't seen zero, zero, one, right? I mean, and I mean, this will work. This is a, this is a far more compact way of designing it than, but intuitively, why should you believe that it is, this has a DFA? Ah, I can remember the last three uh, parts of the string that I've seen so far, right? That's easy, right? I mean, it's a big machine. I, I remember all three uh, things of this thing I've seen so far. Oh, I mean, I, I need eight states, right? And more to get there. And once I see zero, zero, 001, I just, I'm happy and I stay there. That's the only, this is more compact, that's all, okay? But the intuition that this should be doable is different from the, more, the most compact thing you can design. Okay? So we're getting the hang of it a little bit. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So the, 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 we have to be a little careful about this model, right? This is not a program, right? If you think about the programming model too much, then this looks a little weird, right? It's all compactly specified by this uh, automaton, right? The definition is that it's a blind thing going, 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 going. It doesn't know when it ends, basically. Okay? When, and at the end of the thing, I mean, maybe the, the confusion is, how do we know that the input has ended, right? Who tells us that the input has ended, right? But that this is just a mathematical definition. It, it is not, you know, if you think about the more concrete uh, program, which at the end of the input, it gets a signal. Ah, the input has ended. And then it can say yes or no. Maybe it's confusing. But here, it, it, just, it just reads the symbols. And if it happens to be in the accept state at the end of the input, then we say that the machine accepts the string. We say, right? You know, it, it's not a real machine in, in, the, in the conventional sense of a program which behaves nicely. It's just a mathematical model, right? But it's equivalent. It's just to simplify things that we say, this is just a definition, okay? Maybe that's a bit of a confusion, okay? So you have to be a little careful uh, interpreting uh, it as a program. Okay, there are other things which uh, we will uh, skip and get to other things. Uh, let's do something which is interesting. Uh, here is this machine, right? It does something, right? It accepts some language, right? Every machine accepts some language, right? Yeah? We don't know what it is, but it accepts some language. Okay, but I want to know, oh, I want, this machine is accepting this language. Can we design a machine which accepts the complement of the language? What does that mean? That means if this machine accepts a string, then we should reject that string, right? We want to design a new machine which has the following behavior, that look, any string which is in the language accept this machine, it should reject. And when you, anything that is uh, rejected by this machine, it should accept. Can we design a new machine for that? Yeah? 
it's very easy we simply flip the wax up states right see what does this machine do it accepts all strings that if you start at the start state end up in the, that the set of accept states right but we want to reject precisely those things right okay and we want to accept everything that this machine rejects so what should we do what's the new machine the new machine is very simple right we make all this accept and this we don't uh, make accept anymore yeah is that clear yeah okay so what does it what do we get from this that if there is a if for a given language l if there is a dfa m that accepts that language there is another dfa m prime that accepts the complement of the language right so formally how do you state the machine it's you can't just draw figures right so that that's not always possible so languages accepted by dfas are closed under complement that's what the mathematical thing is what is the proof here is how you prove it okay so you have to do it not for this one picture i drew you have to say for every language that is accepted by some dfa m there is another dfa m prime that accepts the the complement of that language right so if m is this machine the, and the language accepted by that is l then here is a machine that accepts the uh, complement of that language what is that machine it has the same set of states same sigma same delta same start state except that what did we do we flip the accept state right the accept states of this machine are the complement of the accept states of that the original machine yeah so what did we do with this machine we simply we didn't change anything right we didn't change anything we just took the accept states of this and said no these are not accept everything else is accept state okay so what is that operation the operation is that we change the only change in the new machine is that this machine now has different set of accept states which is q minus a okay okay how do we formally argue that this accepts the complement well because nothing changed the the uh, delta star for the uh, old machine is the same as the delta star for the new machine right we didn't change the states we didn't change the transition function remember delta star doesn't depend on anything other than the states and the transition function right okay so in particular what does it mean for any string w the behavior of m and m prime is exactly the same right yeah the behavior is the same the only thing is our meaning the meaning is that you know if this guy takes it to a then this this guy takes it to it the same state but now we change the accept states so if this belongs to an accept state then it does not belong to the accept states of the new machine right okay it's just symbol pushing there's nothing going on here right and you intuitively understand that if you flip the uh, if you take the complement of the accept states everything that the old machine accepted will be now rejected and everything that the old machine rejected will be now be accepted okay this is a formal way of saying this in 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 set notation okay yeah yes <laughs> not by heart i mean it should be so obvious that you should not even think about remembering it okay no but no no but the thing what what so look you know it it's a it's important to remember look i have a machine to accept uh, all length of uh, all odd length strings right how can i create a machine which accepts all even length strings ah oh just complement the take the machine which accepts odd length strings and complement the states great okay okay so so that is a very simple operation you, you shouldn't forget it's not that remember but it's sort of like you understand it so that it, it is not something that you need to remember you you, you derive it whenever you want without uh, remembering it in the sense of yeah exactly yeah right no but the double circles should be changed to single circles too we have to be careful yeah <laughs> that's why we use math okay not not uh, uh, yeah oh yeah yeah sorry sorry this is a typo yes yeah uh, no 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 that, that's okay that's okay oh 
No, no, the, 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 no, the, 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 it does not belong to Q. So this is okay. It's just a symbol pushing. It says that, see, you know, if this, is, this and this are the same. So if this guy belongs to accept state, then it, it, it cannot be in Q minus A, right? Yeah. But these are the same, no? Delta, delta star M S W is the same as delta star M prime. Yeah, the math is confusing, but you have to get used to it, right? This is, uh, this is uh, sometimes it's so obvious that you say, ah, wait, wait, what is he saying, right? Okay, do it offline, don't worry, it's not hard, okay. Okay, let's do something more interesting, okay? Okay, so, you know, if I give you a language and we figured out a way to create a machine for it, and I gave you a different language and you create a machine for it, and now we want to know, is it the case that I can create a machine for their intersection? Okay, so let's think of a simple example. Uh, I want, you know, we saw a machine to recognize the language set of all odd length strings, right? Okay. Okay, I, we also saw a machine which says, which can recognize all strings which end in 0, 1, right? So now I want a machine which says, okay, I want all strings which have odd length and end in 0, 1. Now remember when we defined regular languages, by definition regular languages are closed under union, right? That or is, if, a, if the string belongs to this language or that language, then by definition if this is regular and that is regular, the union is also regular, right? But we had difficulty with languages of the form, oh, this string should belong to this language and that language, which is the intersection, right? Because that was not part of the definition of regular languages. Intersection was not easy, right? To, how do you create regular expressions for when you want and property? That something should have this property and that property was hard to define regular expressions for, right? Because then we say, ah, the regular expressions don't naturally tell us how to do that, okay? And later on we said, oh, they are closed under intersection. So how do we figure out whether we can do this? So okay, let's think about programs, right? Suppose I have a program which can recognize language L1, and I have a different program which can recognize L2, okay? And I want to know whether the string belongs to now L1 intersection L2. What do we do? From programming point of view, we'll say, okay, run the program on this, run the program on this. If both of them say yes, we'll say yes. If both of them say no, we'll say no, right? It's very simple, right? Yeah? Is that okay? I mean, if you want union, we say, oh, if one of them says yes, we'll say yes. If both of them say no, we'll say no, yeah? Okay, but we are not working with programs which are arbitrary programs, no? We are very, very dumb programs, right? But what does the dumb program mean? That means that these programs are so limited that we cannot do something like this because we don't have arbitrary programming constructs at this time, okay? So what is this, what, what we want to say, what is the limitation of the DFA? We can't run the first DFA on the string and then restart the second DFA on the string, right? We want a single DFA which can do this simultaneously, right? Okay. So we can't sequentially simulate. We say, let's run DFA one on this string, then let's go back, run this DFA on that second string, and if both of them say yes, we'll say yes, right? Because we can't go back and start the second DFA because we only want one DFA, okay? So we can't do sequential. Can you do something else? Okay, so the idea is that we do it in parallel, okay? We, we want, yes, so we make M, M1 look at the string and M2 is also reading simultaneously, right? We are going like this, right? Okay, what does M1 want? M1 has a fixed memory, right? It says, okay, I can only remember something, it remembers it, M2 also remembers it. But this combination of these two memories is also fixed, right? Yeah? Okay? So, we are going to make both M1 and M2 read the string simultaneously in parallel, okay? And at the end we say, oh, did M1 accept? Did M2 accept? Ah, both accepted, so we should accept, right? We want a single DFA which can do this parallel simulation, okay? How do we do it? If you want to simulate this program in parallel, what should this program remember? It should remember both what M1 remembers 
and M2 remembers, right? Of the stuff which has seen so far. Okay. Okay. Now what does it mean to remember both? How many states should it have? So what it what is its memory? Its memory is M1's memory and its memory as M2's memory together, right? Okay. So that's what the product construction is. It's very simple, but uh, uh, it takes some time to get used to the idea. So here are two machines, and here is uh, 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 it is start state is here. Okay. So this is M1. What does it do? It accepts strings with odd number of zeros. Okay. Well, why is it doing odd number of zeros? Because it is uh, starting at, uh, it, it just, you know, as long as it doesn't see any zero, it, stays, it doesn't worry about ones, right? It doesn't care about ones. It only cares about zeros. So the meaning of this state is, ah, I've seen an even number of zeros so far, okay? This means that I've seen an odd number of zeros so far, okay? And so it toggles between this when it sees a zero, but once it doesn't care, yeah? Agreed? Okay, what does this do? This accepts odd number of ones, okay? The same thing, except that it, 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 it worries about ones, not worries about what? Zeros, right? Because it only cares about the parity of the ones. Okay, now I want a machine which will accept all strings which have an odd number of zeros and an odd number of ones. And that means it wants to accept strings that this one accepts and this two accepts. Okay, so what is the simple idea? We say, aha, we have to remember what this guy is remembering and this guy is remembering, right? So my state is the state of that machine and the state of this machine in one state. Okay, so this is the machine, okay? Okay, so it has four states because that has two times two, right? So what is this meaning? That means that, aha, the, this guy is in state zero, this guy is state uh, red zero, right? So my state is, aha, the, the combined state of this machine is, I'm remembering where this guy was and where this guy was, okay? Or what this guy remembers and what the other machine remembers. And that is the first, don't worry about transitions. That is the, the memory of this machine, right? This machine is remembering what M1 remembers and what M2 remembers, okay? And then it does the most mechanical thing, okay? It, it, is, it is going to simulate in parallel both machines, okay? And so how do we do that? Okay, so what is the meaning of this, right? Okay, so if I, okay, so what should it do on zero, right? When it sees a zero, when it sees a zero, what should this guy do, right? This machine is saying, Okay, what does the blue machine do? It goes to its state, which is one, right? Okay, what does the red machine do on, uh, from state, its red state to zero? Ah, uh -huh, it stays in that, right? So I go to one zero, okay? On a zero, this guy is going to behave like this and like this by, because it has, it is keeping track of both machines' memories, okay? Okay, and now we have to argue that this will do the right thing. Okay, so we'll do that in formally. Uh, what is the mathematical way of formalizing this, and why is it correct? We'll do it next lecture. Okay.